I'm thankful to the organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about the twist band um, uh, structures in lake crystals. So this work was uh, done by the graduate students primarily. Um, uh, Ji, Shank, uh, Yun Ke Kim, Shuang Zhu, uh, Volodymyr Borsh, uh, who just recently graduated, and um, Afsun Jamali. And um, uh, over the last uh, two years or so, working on this problem, we joined collaboration with uh, uh, Min Gao, Sergei Shoyanovsky, as always, um, uh, Yan Yan Li and Quan Li, who provided some of the materials for the study, Tony Akli, Sam Sprunt, and Jim Gleason. This work actually started uh, by uh, getting the materials from uh, Europe, um, from three groups in uh, um, Europe, um, uh, Corey Imri, George Mel, and um, uh, Jack De Swish, um, shared, which shared with us uh, their uh, wonderful and mysterious at the time to us uh, by mesogenic liquid crystals. And um, um, we also discussed a lot of um, in intriguing questions about the structures in uh, twist band um, materials with uh, Vladimir Beryakov, Noel Clark, uh, Martin Choprich, uh, Randy, and uh, Jonathan. So uh, today I will discuss uh, two different twist band structures that might occur in liquid crystals. One is the normal thermodynamically stable phase, which we call NTB phase. It exists in a certain range of temperatures. It doesn't require any external fields, any special type of boundary conditions. It's just a normal state, as, um, for example, is the normal pneumatic phase. And typically, the two phases, the normal pneumatic phase and the NTB phase, they coexist on the temperature range. If you take a material, you cool it down from the isotropic phase, typically you would observe a pneumatic phase, and then down below you would observe an NTB phase. The second structure is different. It's uh, a chiral material. When uh, you cool it down from the isotopic phase, it's a cholesteric. And uh, this cholesteric has a unique um, property of um, tending to bend as much as uh, uh, an experimentalist would wish it to bend, but it does so only if there is an externally applied electric field. So this is the chiral state that exists uh, at the higher temperature range, and if you cool it down, then you might get the chiral version of the NTB phase. So these are two different things, but um, geometrically speaking, they are very similar, similar. So let's start with chemistry. If you look at the picture of any pneumatic water, and if you look closer, you would start to recognize that the molecules are typically rod-like entities, and uh, this is one of those, uh, the so-called pentyl cyanobiphenyl, in which you have um, two benzene rings, aliphatic tail, and um, a strong dipolar group. So the molecules are elongated, they are rotate uh, in space, uh, and uh, if you cool it down from the isotopic phase, they form the simplest type of the liquid crystal, the pneumatic. Now, it takes a little bit of chemistry, and uh, I was explained yesterday by Torsten that you just take the last piece of the tail, you cut it off, and you paste it in a different place, and you get a chiral version of the molecule, of the same molecule. It's called CB15 now, and uh, the structure completely changes. You can do it to all of the molecules of uh, 5CB or just to a fraction of them. The result will be the same. You would see a twisted uh, arrangement of the molecules around some axis in which the local orientation of the molecules is always perpendicular to this axis. So as uh, Randy explained yesterday, depending on the uh, direction from which you observe this structure, you would see different things. If you observe it from the side, you would see an alternation of uh, bright and dark um, stripes. An interesting thing is that the pitch, the periodicity of the structure is uh, most of the times in the micrometer range. It might be half a micrometer or so. And uh, because of that, if you have a top view of the structure, you would see selective reflection of light, Bragg reflection, that uh, would be sensitive to the period of the structure. And since this period is in the visible uh, range of spectrum, you, always, uh, you often see the uh, colorful textures Again, Randy called this um, uh, greenish mass. That's what it is. Uh, in fact, uh, the effect of um, Bragg reflection has been uh, discovered and exploited by uh, insects much uh, earlier than uh, humans thought about. If uh, it, uh, you, you can see the 
um, structure of um, uh, color, structural color that is uh, on the top of this buck. It occurs uh, simply because the kitten uh, is uh, having the cholesteric type of uh, structure and uh, selectively reflects light. Um, the direction from which you view the cholesteric determines the, the picture that you see. And um, it's not only that you can look directly from the top or from the side of the cholesteric structure. Uh, Bulligan, Yves Bulligan, the very same person that um, Randy mentioned yesterday, uh, was uh, interested, uh, intrigued by the structure of chromosomes that um, he saw under the electron microscope um, not that long after the DNA has been discovered in terms of the uh, structural organization. And uh, he saw these uh, little arches. And uh, he realized that this is nothing else but the cholesteric viewed under some tilted uh, direction. In uh, this uh, type of microscopy, you freeze the sample and then you cut it. And depending on how the plane of uh, cutting is, um, is uh, organized in space with respect to the pitch uh, axis, uh, you might uh, observe this um, uh, configuration in which the twist looks like a periodic bend and splay. This is simply because the fracture plane is tilted with respect to the axis of the cholesteric, and this is nicely illustrated in his article in 1968. So now if we come back to the chemistry and think what else can we do with the molecules like CB15 or 5CB, um, there is another opportunity shown here. Some people um, decided about 20 years ago just to synthesize materials that um, are like twins of, um, or dimers, so 5CB. You can imagine two bimesogens connected by a flexible tail. So the question is, how would this molecule arrange itself in space if you have a condensed phase of, of, um, of it? The answer, of course, depends on um, the exact character of um, the structure, and in particular on the odd even nature of the aliphatic tail. If um, the number of CH2 groups is even, then you're dealing with a situation that um, you have um, Zig, Zag, and then Zig again. So that means that the two rigid uh, ends of the molecules are looking approximately into the same direction. So your molecule will look more or less like a rod. But if you have an odd number of CH2 groups, then Zig is followed by Zag, and uh, Zig is followed by Zag. And at the ends, you would have the two rigid rods that are tilted with respect to each other. So you have a bent structure. And if you just try to uh, see how this uh, structure might arrange itself in um, space, then we would realize that the answer will be very different for uh, two types of um, molecules. If the molecules are odd like that, you know the answer is just the normal pneumatic phase. It's easy to arrange them. But if the molecules are bent, the situation is a little bit more tricky. Uh, you would like to satisfy this uh, band by um, uh, placing the molecules in some time of band arrangements, but you cannot provide the uniform band in space with such an arrangement. As shown here, the yellow um, band circles have different radii of curvature uh, in different locations. So that is difficult, but only if you deal with two-dimensional situation. If you just imagine that you can go out of the plane, then uh, it appears to be easy. You simply create this imaginary cylindrical body, and on the surface of that body, you put the bent molecules, and you just slightly tilt them. And if you continue, then you would realize that you are creating a heliconical structure. Uh, and of course, this um, cylindrical body is just an imaginary thing. You don't need it. You just uh, can um, build it um, in Mathematica, for example. Uh, without any uh, artificial cylindrical thing. And uh, another important thing is that you can uh, place many heliconical structures like this next to each other, and that is precisely the structure that has been predicted uh, by um, theorists uh, of the twist band pneumatic phase. So now if you put the three structures that we discussed um, so far next to each other, and if you look at this expression that describes the uh, local director, how it changes in space, you would realize that um, what we studied for more than 140 um, years now is uh, the, the pneumatics and the cholesterics. They are nothing 
more, but just the two ends of the infinitely rich world of the Twisman pneumatic rule. Why? Because the pneumatic is simply the same structure with uh, the opening angle being zero. The cholesteric is the same thing, but with the opening angle being uh, 90 degrees. And everything is between is this theoretically predicted um, twist band pneumatic. The question is uh, why we didn't observe it so far, or at least till very recently, why we don't have uh, a deep knowledge of uh, twist band pneumatic phase as we do for pneumatics and cholesterics. So for us, the question started with, um, we started to try to answer the question in uh, uh, the spring of 2013 uh, when um, uh, Dr. Panov uh, came to us with this uh, material and then later uh, Georg Mill uh, sent us the, the other material. So if you look at these uh, materials, um, under the microscope, you see a typical sequence of phase transitions when you change the temperature. The isotopic phase goes into the pneumatic phase, and these are the two-point defects of strengths one, uh, I mean, linear defects of strengths one half. Then you cool it down, and there is clearly some sort of a transition, and it looks like it's a smectic A, but then uh, you do the X-ray, and Tony Yakli did it um, uh, for this material, and um, it turns out that there is nothing in there that would um, support the idea of um, periodic uh, density modulation. So it's not a smack decay, it's something um, different. And so for the um, next few slides, I will call it NX, uh, following the suggestions of uh, other people. So if you um, take a video, uh, you clearly see that there is a phase transition. This is, can we reduce the light somehow maybe to increase the contrast? So you probably saw that uh, there, there was a wave of uh, transition in that texture. And uh, yeah, it would be maybe better to just, yes, make it completely dark. So um, that, um, that um, uh, wave replaced the flickering of the director with a frozen structure shown here. And um, if you do the experiment with some other cell, you might see a similar transition. And uh, now you see something recognizable, namely you see focal conic domains popping up here and there. And uh, it's clearly a texture that is uh, reminding us of a smectic A, but it's not smectic A. So um, we were lucky to have a material in which uh, the anisotropy of dielectric uh, permittivity is negative. That means if you... Uh, I would prefer to have it dark because I have a bunch of other textures, so it might be better to see them in the dark. Uh, so if, um, if you have this uh, material and you align it uh, in uh, uh, the direction perpendicular to the glass plates of the cell, the texture will be dark under the crossed polarizers. But then if you apply electric field in the vertical direction, if delta epsilon is negative, the director would like, or optical axis, would like to realign perpendicular to the field. And this is the well-known effect, uh, Frederick's effect, that we are using in um, the crystal displays. Uh, it turns out that in this NX phase, the situation is very different from the classic twist, uh, from the classic um, Frederick's effect. It's not the second type uh, order structural transition. It's a pronounced nucleation type of the transition. You see that little uh, uh, nuclei of the new structure appear here and there, and then they grow and grow. And uh, if you measure the voltage at which this uh, texture starts to expand and replace black with uh, colors, uh, you would realize that there is a thickness dependence that is um, approximately going as a square root of um, the cell thickness, uh, which is very different from the Frederick's transition in normal pneumatic, uh, where the voltage does not depend on the thickness of the cell. So at this stage, it looks like uh, you are dealing really with something that is not entirely pneumatic. And uh, we also measured the elastic constants of the materials in the pneumatic phase. And we found that um, they show really very strange behavior, namely that the elastic constant of band, K33, that is typically larger than all other constants in the pneumatic like crystals such as uh, 5CB. In these materials, this constant is very small and goes almost to zero within the experimental accuracy of uh, your measurements um, uh, when you approach the NX phase. So 
if uh, you take these facts together, then uh, it appears that, yes, you are dealing with the anti-B phase the way it was predicted. Uh, uh, and uh, you, you, you do have some modulation of the director because that explains uh, why you um, would have a nucleation of the rounded domains in this NTB phase when you apply electric field. You can even uh, write down the elastic uh, free energy density for the material in which you deal just with some average axis T, which might be the axis of um, heliconical uh, arrangement uh, with uh, anisotropy with respect to the applied electric field and all that. And this model can explain you why, for example, you have this strange dependency of the voltage that uh, causes um, expansion of the uh, realigned um, NX phase in the cell of a certain thickness. But uh, you don't have the proof that uh, you have the modulation from the optical textures. No matter how long you look at textures like this, you don't see a clearly defined, let's say, fingerprint texture as we would see in a normal cholesteric. And uh, by the way, uh, these uh, textures are really beautiful. I would like to just uh, show you a sequence of some of them. This is all this NX uh, phase that uh, you observe under the microscope. It shows uh, wonderful um, rich in cusps textures like this one and this one. So, but still these pictures do not give you the idea about the um, real periodicity of the structure. And in the spring of, uh, spring of uh, 2013, we were lucky enough that finally our uh, uh, cryo and freeze fracture TEM uh, laboratory, thanks to Dr. Mingao, started to work. And literally the first um, um, glimpse of these um, materials under the TEM revealed that uh, we, we do have periodic uh, arrangement and we simply couldn't see it with an optical microscope because it's very short. It's around um, eight nanometers. And at the very same time, the very same textures, as you learned yesterday from the pictures shown by Epiphania, uh, were uh, taken uh, at um, the uh, University of Colorado in Boulder. So the, the structure does show some periodicity. It's very small. And um, the point is that uh, this periodicity most probably comes from the heliconical structure of uh, the interface. When you fracture it, you, you probably follow the um, the direction of the uh, smallest molecular density and that uh, direction should have the sinusoidal type of uh, shape. And when uh, you prepare the replica to observe in uh, uh, TEM, uh, what you do, you obliquely deposit um, heavy metals and they go into the valleys of this uh, freeze fractured plane and that creates the contrast in the TEM. So, but um, that's not necessarily proving you that your structure is twist band because it might be, for example, a cholesteric or it might be the cousin of twist band that uh, we do not discuss today, the splay band phase that also might exist in uh, some materials. So uh, then we came back to actually to the old prediction by um, Yves Bulligan. When he was uh, trying to prove to people that DNA is really packing as in a cholesteric in chromosomes, he needed to kind of uh, fence of the criticism that it might be something different from a cholesteric, for example, twist band structure. And in year uh, 1978, he said that uh, in appendix of his uh, work that, uh, you know, my structure is really a cholesteric because if it were a twist band pneumatic, of course, he didn't use the, the words twist band, but the mathematics was uh, absolutely the same. So if it were this uh, heliconical structure, then uh, the freeze fractured planes wouldn't look like the sequence of uh, symmetric uh, arcs. They would look either as the alternating sequence of uh, wide and narrow bands or as uh, incomplete um, bands shown here. And so we were lucky enough to observe precisely what uh, Yves Bulligan predicted for the heliconical structure, the um, uh, asymmetric um, stripes and also incomplete wavy type of structures that correspond to a different um, uh, cutting plane of the uh, freeze fracture plane. So uh, there is still a lot of questions about the true microscopic or nanoscopic structure of this phase. For example, if we look from uh, the top of the structure, we see some additional um, 
uh, elements. Um, uh, for example, some domain structure that depends on strongly on whether we have an uh, additional chiral additive in the system. Or if we prepare a hybrid aligned film, we see something that looks from the top, also like a domain structure. We don't quite understand what it is. And there is a lot of work to be done uh, to uh, understand uh, fully the uh, nanoscale um, uh, details of the twist uh, bent pneumatic phase. With this, I just switch to a different structure of twist bend that occurs at uh, the temperatures that would normally correspond to the pneumatic. By the way, this temperature range, of course, is um, you know the thing that you can control by mixing the uh, different materials together. And uh, uh, in what follows, our um, structures uh, live in the room temperature environment, and in fact, in a very broad range above the room. So uh, all the textures that I would show later uh, are um, uh, you know, potentially ready for practical applications. It's not something that exists only about 100 degrees centigrade. So uh, if you look at the uh, structure of the cholesteric, and uh, if you would like to uh, make a device that changes color as the function of the applied voltage, for example, that little bug would like to change the color from green to yellow or to, to, to red with the help of some uh, externally applied electric field, you would realize that with the normal cholesterics, it's not that easy because um, uh, to stretch the cholesteric pitch, I would need to apply probably the, the field parallel to the uh, helical axis. If I apply it perpendicularly, I wouldn't have a uniform stretching. But the problem is that in this geometry, the director field is everywhere perpendicular to the electric field, and uh, there is no handle to realign the uh, molecules. In contrast, if I have this heliconical structure, then everywhere I have a finite uh, angle between the uh, direction of the electric field and the local director, and uh, this uh, handle might realign the uh, molecules uh, provided the dielectric anisotropy is positive now so that the molecules would like to be parallel to the uh, electric field. And of course I don't want this structure to be of the periodicity 10 nanometers if I want to apply it to some visible um, range of uh, applications. I want it to be in the range of um, the micrometers or sub-micrometers. And again, here uh, there is a lot of predictions already. Bob Mayer and also one of the home assignments uh, problems in the Zen's book uh, talk about a situation like this. So if you have a pneumatic or cholesteric rather, in which um, the band elastic constant is small, then you might get this heliconical structure that would change the pitch as the function of the applied electric field. Of course, the year was 1968, the same year that uh, Yves Bulligan was struggling to explain people why DNA forms a cholesteric rather than the twist band pneumatic. And um, uh, no one paid much attention because such a material didn't exist at that time. But if you read this article in 2013, you realize that uh, with these measurements of the elastic constants, the bimesogens are an ideal material to try to finally verify this theoretical prediction. And that's what we did. Uh, first, uh, just uh, you know, very simple qualitative consideration. So if your field applied to this material is really strong, then all the molecules follow the dielectric anisotropy and are parallel to the field. Now imagine that you decrease the field, then the chiral interactions and the tendency to bend should take over and you might observe some um, uh, heliconical structure, presumably with a, a relatively small opening angle theta and some pitch that um, might be small. And then as you continue to decrease the voltage, this opening angle might uh, increase and the pitch might change. And finally, you would get the cholesteric, but uh, this cholesteric would probably be oriented like this with a helix perpendicular to the heliconical structure. So this is the qualitative prediction. We, we did some um, analytical work to, to see what would be, for example, the dependency of the angle on the applied field and things like that. And then the experiment demonstrated that, uh, in fact, we really have what is expected. Uh, this is the cell in which the electric field is horizontal. So if the field is strong, then uh, the molecules are parallel to the field. In this case, they are uh, along the vertical axis. But if you reduce the field, you see the appearance of nicely shaped uh, pseudo layers. And um, uh, if you decrease it further, then the pitch, the periodicity of this structure changes. 
by uh, nucleating uh, defect lines uh, uh, that propagate and change the, uh, the pitch of the uh, structure. If the field is uh, approaching zero, then you have a complete reconstruction of the heliconical structure into the cholesteric structure, and you might notice that the direction of the axis is orthogonal to, to this case. So um, you then measure the periodicity and the opening tilt angle and compare it to the theory and to the numerical simulations that um, Sergei did. And, and you see a wonderful um, agreement that um, tells you that the electric field really can control the pitch in a very broad range. In this particular material between uh, almost three micrometers and something a little bit less than one micrometer. And then we uh, decided that uh, we can uh, now use the uh, geometry that uh, most of the people would be interested. Uh, this is the geometry in which the um, heliconical axis is perpendicular to the planes of the uh, cell, so that if you look from above, like you're looking through the window, you might see a change in color. And um, this is exactly what um, is shown in this video. This is the uh, movie that shows how this heliconical structure changes the color. First it was in, in, in ultraviolet, you wouldn't even notice, you know, it was just black. But then it goes through the entire spectrum of visible light, and then it goes uh, dark, but in fact it uh, goes into the state that uh, reflects light in the uh, infrared. And so you have a wonderful um, material that uh, shows selective reflection of light uh, that uh, ranges uh, from ultraviolet all the way through visible and ending in the infrared. So with this, I come to the summary. Uh, so we have two types of twist band structures in leaked crystals. One is the twist band pneumatic phase, that is a normal thermodynamically stable phase uh, with a very tight uh, pitch, around 10 nanometers. Uh, this pitch is caused by the fact that the local director kind of does a precession motion around the single optical axis. Uh, and uh, there is still a lot of um, details that we don't understand the uh, nanoscale structure of these uh, uh, materials. But what we do know is that uh, in appearance, uh, when you take um, microscopic scales, such as optical microscopy observations, these materials look pretty much like um, smectic materials, and um, they, they, they have similar defects and um, similar structures. Uh, and uh, there is also a second type of twist band structure. This is a normal cholesteric, just with the feature that its um, splay, uh, splay and twist elastic constants are much larger than the band constant. And so when you apply electric field, the deformation that occurs is of the twist band type, because band doesn't cost much. And um, uh, this uh, structure uh, is organized in such a way that you can apply the electric field parallel to its uh, axis. And when the field changes, so does the periodicity of the structure. And it changes in a very broad range. And that gives you the opportunity to uh, control the wavelengths of um, selectively reflected light. And that might be useful for some applications. Uh, you can imagine some sort of a smart window that uh, might block infrared or visible light, depending on the voltage you apply to the uh, cell. And with that, uh, thank you very much for your attention. say anything about the materials for that second part of your talk because they seem to be quite different, have to be quite different than the prescribed the, the type. It's uh, CB7, CB. If uh, you don't care about the temperature, it, it's this, uh, you know, basic chemistry slide. So this, this material is the working horse of the twist band um, cholesteric structures. To this material, we add something like uh, CB15, for example, would work, uh, although we are using S811. Plus, we add um, 5CB. So all these three guys are shown here. I'm not hiding any chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> the 5CB the, the uh, does tremendous job of uh, reducing the temperatures of the uh, entire range of interest to us where the K3 is uh, very small. And so, yeah, it's exactly this composition. It just uh, mix these guys together. And um, 
Um, in the part of, of the talk, uh, when you describe the uh, marking at the cross sections uh, that you observe and even uh, and even observed in electron microscopy, from the geometrical standpoint, uh, I would imagine that there should be a spectrum of periodicities that you should see. Right, right. Uh, depending on how uh, the cross-section uh, occurs. Yeah, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. But the, the point is that uh, when uh, you do the freeze fracture, what happens is that, uh, uh, you know, the, the structure tears along the easiest direction. And the easiest direction is the direction parallel to the heliconical axis. Why? Because this is the axis where the rupture of individual molecules, so to speak, is the least uh, probable. And uh, this is a, you know, kind of rule of a thumb that uh, uh, many other people observed while dealing with the TEM of liquid crystals. That it, in smectics, for example, it uh, would also tear either parallel to the normal to the layers or between the layers. So in this structure, this is the easiest direction. And then, uh, you know, we, we just got lucky to get a different uh, cuts shown here, but they are not as often as you would observe, uh, as you would um, uh, wish. And then uh, indeed, but I think it's uh, mostly the feature of the phase itself, we do have um, just what you said. We, it appears that we have parallel cuts, but the period changes from point to point. You, you might uh, even observe it in some of those uh, pictures. We, we think that uh, the conformation of these uh, molecules might be different in different parts of the cell, and uh, depending on the quenching rate, you might get the parts in which the period is not 8 or 5 nanometers. It might be 7. In some cases, we observe in 3.9, some very weird numbers. And this is exactly what we need to explore. One more. Is there any uh, molecular strategy to con field control the opening angle, making, for example, like a um, negative electric constant or something like that? Uh, yeah, there should be, of course. But um, I, I, I don't know much about the connection between the real chemistry and the macroscopic properties of this phase. The number of materials we studied so far is very limited, and uh, I know that Tony and uh, Jim and other people are also joining the efforts to establish the chemical structure, microscopic parameters, relationships. And of course, Colorado Group does a lot of research in this direction. Incredible, incredible job. This is a really interesting phase, by the way, as you can all tell. And, uh, it's clear where the bend comes from, where the twist is coming from. It's not, not so clear with this really tight here, so. Right. So, so it's kind of, I have a feeling this whole thing is going to explode. So. All right, thanks a lot, Owen. Thank you.